Okay, so this is um, just an explanation or introduction to process um, for you. Um, I wanted to talk just a second about um, the process essay um, and the process of a process paper. Um, hopefully that you have already, if you're following your timeline of activities, you're, you've already read Showering with Your Dog. Um, if you have it, you need to stop this now and go and read Showering Your, your Dog by Marco. Um, it's in your course documents for the process essay. So process papers, the purpose of a process is to show us or tell us how something is done. Three kinds of process papers, the ones that convey information like a recipe, technical directions, papers that uh, interpret a process, making it interesting to readers who may never attempt to read it to do it themselves. And then the third kind, which describes how process a process that cannot be reduced into a surefire recipe, like how to paint a landscape, how to write, how to have a happy relationship. The essence of a process essay for our purposes is interpretation. We may not need the information, but the writer has earned our interest by interpreting this process in a way that makes it interesting to us, even if we may never want to try it out for ourselves. Um, a how-to uh, is not really the way to go. It has to be more than just a how-to. It has to provide a commentary on the process. And then it's also got to have those common moves that we talked about several times now for um, an essay to be a successful essay. First, you have to kind of guess accurately what your reader already knows about what you're talking about, what they need to know, and what they need to have explained. Um, that's going to help with your economy. You don't want to fill in a lot of backstory if your reader already probably has a good idea about what you're talking about. Next, you have to decide on your organization method. This is pretty easy. If the subject is a linear process, how to fry fish, how to change the oil in a car, you just arrange the steps in chronological order by time, adding comments, explanations, and definitions as you go. If it's nonlinear, like listening to music, saving the environment, plotting becomes more important. So you have to arrange the steps in a sequence that is going to hold your reader's interest. So if you got showering with your dog, I want to go through it just really quickly um, using the seven common moves. If you haven't already figured it out, the purpose of that essay, Showering With Your Dog, is not to tell us to how to shower with our dogs. It's an entertainment piece. It's meant to make us smile. It's a spoof or a parody, and it's not intended to be taken seriously. So the beginning presents an unsettling situation as that stinky dog, combined with the proposition that sometimes we have no other choice but to shower with an animal. If you've ever had a big animal uh, you know you end up kind of getting a shower, too, if you try to give him or her a bath. So this assertion is just really kind of preposterous, though, that we actually get into the shower with our dog. Um, so we're going to be inclined a little bit just to continue to see if she can keep us entertained. So she invents details that amuse us using her writer's eye and her voice to create striking and humorous images. Without looking back at the essay, you probably find it easy to remember some of the images. That chicken skin on the drain really stood out to me. Or the author wearing a bathing suit to protect her modesty in front of her animal. As if her animal really cares if she's wearing a bathing suit. Um, but those are humorous details that create, um, create interest for us. Um, it's a linear process. The steps are in chronological order. It's outlined very clearly with bold headings, step one, step two. Once you describe the first step, you're going to have a continuous sense of unfinished business until you describe the last step. Once the author decides to shower with her dog, our curiosity remains unsatisfied until she's finished with her task. I love this, um, this, this her style. Um, this is that has, um, the animal tends to move to parts of the shower where there is no water. And so it becomes a perpetual task to keep moving to the parts of the shower where there is a dog. This is a crisscross construction. That's supposed to be crisscross, not criss criss. It's called a chiasmus. And I want you to think of uh, John F. Kennedy's famous, uh, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, um, speech. 
Um, that is just a popular um, stylistic um, construction. Another traditional stylistic move that she uses is personification. Treating that animal or that inanimate object as if it were human. So the dog becomes a kind of like a human uh, characterist, uh, character in the story. It's funny to imagine a dog watching horror movies, engaging in mind-blowing philosophical conventions, or listening to an explanation of the legal system. However, we get all of that in Marco's essay. She also uses hyperbole, which is exaggeration and over-exaggeration. The fact that a shower would be a great place to hit fungos. Those are those, um, that's what they call the fly balls that um, coaches hit to fielders for practice. Uh, and the fact that dogs resent showers so much that they have difficulty suppressing the urge to attack and devour their owners are both gross exaggerations. They're meant to be humorous. They're not meant to be taken seriously. Her voice is conversational. Let's face it, she says at the very beginning as if her and her pals are sitting down to have a chat. Even the most beloved dog can be very stinky at times. Not fetid, bold, musty, putrid, malodorous, not rancid or rank, she uses stinky. Okay, it's very conversational. She also uses italics to emphasize words that she might have emphasized in speech. It is advisable to wear swimwear, but you would know. Okay, she's emphasizing words in italics that she might have emphasized while she was speaking. Sometimes she mimics someone seriously giving instruction. During this phase, apply shampoo. Sometimes she uses learned words like hygiene, indoor facilities, and parent or guardian, or adopts the loftiness of a scholar or scientist. It is a well-documented fact that only a minute amount of chicken skin can accumulate in the lower third of any area of the world before it will be joined by a dog. But Marco uses these voices satirically, connecting that lofty language with that silly subject. Uh, it's playful, personal, and friendly. Were there any details that could have been omitted without being missed? What does chicken skin have to do with the essay? What purpose is served by mentioning hair in the drain? Would the essay have been improved or worsened without the, these details? I think that each one of these details adds a an, a, an silliness, um, a, that writer's style, uh, it, that personal tone, that friendly tone that she's trying to convey, and they're all purposeful for, um, for her task. Process paper usually has a natural ending. It ends when the process ends, when the cake is baked, the program's installed, or in this case, when the dog emerges from the shower no longer stinky. Marco takes this one step further, going beyond the process to the possible effects. She adds a coda to the end in the form of a joke, having us imagine what would happen if we left Lee and Tick shampoo in the shower where someone might use it to wash their own hair. She then adds another joke, I know I have helped you, knowing full well she hasn't helped us at all. It was not meant to be a, a, a help. So for this paper, I want you to think of a process that you know better than most people in your school. How to repair something, make something, do something, or think of something zany, like how to become famous by being really stupid, like the Kardashians, how to con your parents into letting you do something or get something, or how to travel around the world without paying for it. Make a list of your steps and then describe each step. Remember, to make it interesting to other people, we've talked about this multiple times, it has to be unique and it has to mean something, okay? So that's your journal and that those are the two options that you're going to have for your paper, which you'll see when you read your prompt. Um, I gave you two other essays that you can use to um, to help you. How to Write with Style is a more serious piece. And Fighting Words by Rick Bragg is actually just a really funny piece on college fans, uh, college football fans. So it gives you two more options to read and um, interpret and analyze to help you with your own process essay. So good luck, and I look forward to reading your essays.